Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed Season 1 series, The Real Housewives of Potomac. Season 1, Episode 12, The Reunion Part 2. This is it guys, the end of Potomac Season 1. Oh my gosh. This is the final episode. There's only two parts to this reunion, so let's get into it. We open up where we left off with part one, talking about race. Sharice chimes in and tells Giselle and Robin that she thought asking Katie what box she's going to check for her children was insulting and offensive. Katie's like, asking me to put my children, who are as mixed as they could be, in a box, that offends me. Okay. She wasn't asking you to put your children in a box. I mean, what Robin says is it was actually a question more to educate myself, not offend you. And Katie's like, okay, all right, I understand now. I'm sorry that I cut you off so many times. Katie's weird, you guys. I still don't like her. I think somebody told me she's not on anymore after this season, and I'm happy. Or she comes on as a friend of or something. Whatever. Less Katie, thumbs up is what I say. But Robin appreciates that and says thank you. Uh, Now Uh, moving on to bug grabbing. As that pertains to race. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Again, Robin's like, I truly didn't know. Because it's like not a thing that black guys would do. Okay, that you know. Black guys you know maybe. This bugs me when anybody feels like they can speak for all members of a certain race or sex or anything. I'm a woman. Do you think that I think I can speak for what all women like? No, of course not. There's something so entitled, I guess, or something. I don't know what it is exactly, but Robin is very small-minded in a way that what she knows, you know, pertains to everybody in the world then. Because in her life, any man she's ever been with would never grab another man's butt. Well, you know, guess what? Same for me. And I'm white. It's so dumb that Robin thinks because one man did something that she finds unusual that all men of his race must be the same. Why? Why can't this just be a Michael Darby thing? We move on to Sharice, and Andy says, We recently learned that your husband, Eddie, was let go from his coaching job at Rutgers. Does that mean he's moving back home? Sharice, no. Andy, is he looking for work near home? Sharice, I think he's looking for a new job anywhere he can get a new job. Okay. Andy goes, did you ever talk to him about the show? She said, no. Are you discussing divorce? She said, no, we don't discuss divorce. And he's like, do you discuss anything with Eddie? And she goes, yes, we talk about the children or other things. And he said, do you love him? And she said, yes, I am committed to my vows. She's not pursuing divorce anymore. I don't know. It was weird. And so Ashley goes, but if you're unhappy, you probably need to make a few changes, right? Sharice, where are you getting this from? What? What do you mean, where is she getting it from? Ashley goes, I just watched the TV. (laughs) I love that she said that. Because, yeah, that's where we're getting it from, Sharice. You, this whole season up until now. How about that? So Sharice now is acting like she was just angry that day. And, um, and she's not filing for divorce. Okay, so why is your husband not moving home then? He's no longer in New Jersey because of his job. So, you know, how do you explain that? Now Giselle says, are you going to send us any more stank messages about your marriage? And she goes, what are you talking about? Giselle goes, oh, something about there's people snooping around. And Cherise said, how is that stank? Giselle goes, the part about please do not spread lies to make yourself relevant as it pertains to my marriage. Cherise doesn't remember sending that text. So I don't know what's going on there. She tells Andy that she's closest to Katie now and that she used to be that she was getting closer to Karen But I don't know what happened exactly. I'm still unclear. She claims that Karen called her late one night and told her, I'm the star of this show. Which, I mean, come on. A, that sounds like something Karen would say. And B, 
She's not wrong, is she? Karen Huger is pretty much the star of the show. But also there was something about Karen not wanting to be seen in public with Sharice or something. Like she couldn't go for a walk with her because she didn't want to be seen with her. And Karen starts to say, oh, that's because we we were still filming. And then Giselle goes, oh, well, if you were still filming. And then Andy said, well, that's doesn't mean you can't go for a walk together. So again, no, that was not addressed, and I'm not sure what she was getting at with that. Sharice tells us that Eddie did not come to her 50th birthday party because it was being filmed. So I don't know if he's another one of those that doesn't want to be on camera. I don't know. She said that she agreed to be on the show because she's going through so much and she wanted to be a voice for other women who might be going through various struggles. I mean, I don't exactly know what she meant, but apparently Katie and Andy did because right away Katie said, you're the reason that I gave the ring back to Andrew and like I was strong about that. And Andy said, your vulnerability on the show was what drew me to you. Andy does call her out on the fact that she now during this reunion seems very unemotional about, you know, the situation with Eddie, which seems pretty sad. And um, she's like, really? And she goes, well, I'm affected, but I'm just, I handle it differently. We move on to Katie and her intense desire to get married this season. We see the proposal again, and of course it gets Katie all emotional. I guess he was supposed to be on the reunion, uh, they were in the car on the way to the airport coming to New York. Uh, we move on to Katie's bisexuality. Andy, of course, asks her, who of the other housewives would you have sex with? Katie said, Cherise, for sure, and definitely Ashley. And then she said, and I would probably have hate sex with Giselle. <laughs> Giselle goes, oh, hate sex. I've never had hate sex. <laughs> Giselle cracks me up. Now Ray and Michael join the ladies, and I assume this is when Andrew would have joined the ladies as well. Um, Michael and Ray get into it when Ray tells Michael, you were trying to have a male fantasy with seven women. Michael says what I've been saying all along, which is, why would I look at Karen when I've got Ashley as my wife? Which, I mean, isn't the nicest thing to say to her face, but... You know, a viewer asks Giselle if she still thinks that Michael is gay. Spoiler alert. I think it has come to light that he is. Am I wrong about that, you guys? I Have I heard that they have a Bronwyn Sean type open marriage? I don't know that for the fact, but that is the word on the street. Giselle says it's none of her business, but for Ashley's sake, she hopes not. Michael claims that he squeezed Andrew's ass because he's become qu quite... F quite fond of Andrew. <laughs> and he has a great ass. So that is not exactly helping Michael's case. Also, ew. Michael, anybody but Andrew, okay? Grab Andy's ass. Michael tells the rest of the women that they would never survive in Australia because ass grabbing and having fun is basically what they do all day, every day. The entire country grabbing asses. Sounds about right. We talk about Karen and her comment that Michael shouldn't pull out next time so that Ashley can have a baby of her own and not bother with Raven. Ashley, I am loving Ashley in this reunion, by the way, you guys. She's like, Karen, you are delusional if you think I want to be best friends with your daughter. I mean, honestly, all she said, or at least all that they aired, was that, I, oh yeah, I would like to get to know your daughter better. Karen just went off the deep end with that. Next is Giselle's turn, and we see her montage of everything she's done this season. We talk about her dating life. She gets called out for getting involved in everybody else's business. Charisse thinks that Giselle is a narcissist, perhaps. And everyone's like, oh, well, I think we're all a little bit narcissistic. Karen goes, I love me some Karen. Charisse goes, and what else? And she's like, what? 
Well, there's more to it than that. And everyone looks confused. Andy goes, I thought that was what the definition was. I thought it was just like self-love. And Charisse goes, no, that's only part of it. A narcissistic person takes pleasure in bringing other people down to make them feel better. So Robin's like, mm. Can we get some clarification on that? She actually looks it up and reads the definition. And she's like, it doesn't say anything about other people, how they treat other people. Sharice goes, well, maybe not in that one. She is so sure of herself. And this correcting other people, like last week when Ashley was saying something was a moot point, it's mute. Like she... Not only, not only is she wrong, but like she felt so sure that she had to correct somebody else for being wrong. That's incredible to me. And now with this definition of narcissism, she thinks she knows the real definition and that the dictionary you just looked at, Robin, the dictionary is wrong. Must be nice to be that confident. We move on to Katie sucking face with Andrew at Ashley's birthday party. Those were their words, not mine. I think that's gross. Made worse by the fact that it's Andrew. Giselle, again, just concerned about you, Katie, because your behavior was so off. Katie tells her that suggesting that she was on drugs is a very dangerous thing to do on television when she has just been through, I guess, a tough divorce and she's got children and, you know, now accusing her of using drugs is not cool. Katie and Giselle get into this big heated thing. Something about Giselle is accusing Katie of saying something about Robin's business and being so drunk all the time that you can never talk to her on camera. Giselle's like, it was just, it was frustrating to me because every time you would want to have a conversation with her, like for a scene or whatever, she was too drunk and it was frustrating to Giselle. I don't know. I don't know if that was true. I, I, I don't know. Katie's like, everybody here had problems with you, Giselle. And she's like, that's not true. So then of course, Katie's like, Sharice? And she goes, well, yeah. And Karen, ha Karen's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Karen didn't want to play that game. Robin, of course, is the one who said, no, she doesn't have problems with Giselle. And Ashley, of course, agrees with Katie that, yeah, she had problems with her too. So then Giselle goes, do you want to talk about what was edited out? And Katie goes, no. Right away, she's like, no. So Andy goes, what was edited out? Which is exactly what I was thinking. Giselle goes, nothing, never mind. Let's continue. So Andy looks at Katie and said, do you know what was edited out? And Katie goes, no, I'm not an editor. <laughs> oh my God, I can't keep up with the rest of what's happening. It's another situation where everybody's talking at once. I'm not following the story. It's all very strange because this is stuff that wasn't, on the show that they're talking about. Giselle claims that during a promo shoot, Katie showed up late, she was drunk, and she peed on the couch. Katie's response to that is, I had three kids, and I was laughing, and a little pee came out. <laughs> okay, now it is time for the final moments. Andy says, Sharice, you glad you did the show? And she said, yes. And he goes, did you learn anything? Sharice. Everything is not what it seems. Andy, Ashley? Whoa, 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 hold up. Are we not going to talk about that? What the hell did that mean? What she learned from the show is that everything is not as it seems. Okay, we're just going to move on to Ashley? I guess. Ashley says, I loved every single moment, Andy. And he goes, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. Robin? Robin says, I think I need to look at my relationship more closely. Katie, newly single, as of 24 hours. Way to rub it in, Andy. He goes, how do you move forward? Katie says, I think it was a great experience for me, and it taught me a lot about who I am and how to be and how not to be and how not to be phony. Okay. Andy, Giselle? What's the word on the street for season one, Giselle? Word on the street is that season one is the best anyone has ever seen. So they grab the champagne and Andy says, Karen, I would like you to lead us in a toast. But wait, Sharice, before the toast, I feel like I have to be honest because I, I did leave something out. 
Everyone stops in their tracks. And then she said, since doing the show, my husband has not spoken to me at all. Oh, that was sad. Andy goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I guess it's because she aired their dirty laundry on the show, but she said that she's still glad that she did it and she doesn't regret it because it's her truth and she's not ashamed of it. And everybody is pretty much like supportive. Yes, you have to do what's right for you and all that. And then Karen's like, well, how do I follow that up with a toast? But she does. She said, I loved this experience. I consider each and every one of these ladies a friend. I know we get on each other's nerves, but I have learned so much from all of you. And I hope we can move forward in friendship and peace with a little fighting. Yes. Words of wisdom from Karen Huger. It's so funny because it's basically what I've been saying for a while now. Don't try to destroy each other's lives, families, careers. Just a little fighting is all we need. (laughs) A little fighting, a little drinking, a little ridiculous behavior, some over-the-top fashion, hair, makeup, and I'm good. And that is a wrap on my very first season one series and a wrap on season one for The Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay, so here's the plan, guys. I am not going to be covering season two, three, four, five of Potomac. Not to say I won't be watching them, but my whole idea of the season one series is that I stick with the very first season of whatever the franchise is. So I will be taking a couple weeks off And then I'm going to come back with season one of The Real Housewives of Orange County. Now, this is interesting. I think there's only six episodes and one reunion. So that's going to be pretty fast. That's just seven weeks. That's going to be done. What I want from you guys in the comment section is you tell me what you would like to see next Season one of New Jersey, New York, you tell me. Whatever gets the most votes is what I will do after Orange County. I've already committed to Orange County next. And like I said, it's just going to be a very short seven episode thing. So after that, you guys are going to pick whoever gets the most votes. That will be the franchise I do next. Also, my intention is to watch Potomac. I love these ladies of Potomac. So I'm going to watch season two, three, four, five. I hope I get caught up to season six to do it when it's on the air. I am absolutely not going to promise that because that's a big ask for me. I don't have much free time, but um, th- I would like to. Also, what I think I'm going to do is when I come across an iconic episode, my daughter is telling me that season three is like to die for, so possibly season three episodes. When I come across an episode that is like, oh my God, there's been a great fight or something, a big reveal or something like that, I will probably just throw up a random little recap of it. So look for those every once in a while, randomly thrown in here or there. Um, Other than that, uh, season one is going to start again a couple weeks from now. All right. Thanks for supporting this little (laughs) season one thing of mine. I do think it's fun. It's, I think it's a fun look back and I hope it catches on a little bit more because it's really fun for me to do. All right. Thanks for being here. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave your comments down below. I read everything. I really do. I don't always have time to answer everything, but I do read your comments. Thanks again, and I will see you next time. Bye.